I was expecting that only two people follow up up till now. We are already here in part 19, but it seems like quite there's quite some interest by people to get information about the Bitwig controller API. So now we're in version 19 and want to look into the API version 12, which is already out for some while and it got introduced in 3.2.5, if I remember correctly. What does this version provide us? Let's first have a look at the history documentation so if you look here history api version 12 in the between control surface api documentation you see there were lots of functions added to controller host something for device and device bank and if you look closer controller host which says everything with a device matcher so device matcher is the new thing here what is that so uh, there are three aspects which got addressed in this api 12 update first one is that we can filter for specific devices and therefore search so what does it mean it means for example we can find a drum machine on the track or we can find an eq so there could be an application that you always want to have an eq on a channel could automatically insert that or if you press a button and it's not already there you add an equalizer to your track second one is that you can address specific devices for example if you want to build yourself a controller which always controls the equalizer always controls a specific plugin you want to build a fancy controller for the polysynth or stuff like that then you can now do that there was already the direct parameter api for that but this was really really broken and hard to use and had plenty of bugs so this is now the much much nicer way and this works also not only with vsts but with all devices which can be loaded in bitwig and the third one is that we can can insert a specific device now you can insert bitwig devices vsts and vst2 and vst3 as well but this requires that you develop with java so far because you need to create such uuids and this is only possible currently via java so this tutorial will use now java as well for the demonstration let's first start out with here how can you filter device i did not prepare any uh, source code so this will be a challenge because i wanted to challenge myself so challenge accepted <laughs> Okay, what do we do to create a new project? Because I wanted to show you and refresh it also as well, uh, you go into the help section and if you scroll down, or we need to go to the document help section, documentation, scroll down, you can say you want to create a new project. We want to have a Java project. We want to call it uh, very creatively AP12, API 12 test. And let's say this is both MOS. We go straight up to version one. We don't need any media inputs because we just want to look into devices, uh, filtering and stuff. We choose here simply, I prepared something here on a desktop. Let's just put it there on a desktop and then let's say, and let's go with that. Okay. Okay. Then let's do it like this. 12. Let's do it like this. Ah, it's at one. Okay, yeah, API 12. Let's do it like this, so then we can... What? Ah, the class name. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Then we will remove that one and then... Finally, who finally we could create it and it created the source and the POM file and we should be able to import that. So I prepared also an empty Eclipse workspace. Let's say we want to import projects and this is an existing Maven project, existing Maven project, select that here from the desktop where it is, here it is select the folder finish and we have the project here ready to edit as well and we can also can say we want the maven build create a new maven build with that one that's it go let's install let's give it a name compile bitwig still uses jdk 12 so we need to have that on our computer and use that as well let's run that build let's see how it goes 
and the build is fine so far great and if we go in that directory again there should be now the target there is now the extension file and we could also optimize that a bit if we change here that to the output directory of bitwig and you can configure that here in the configurations when you say here with the maven build so here for the maven build you can say the parameter is bitwig extension directory and bitwig extension i showed that in detail in a java tutorial how to develop with java in bitwig and there you can look that up as well so if you now run the build and compile it you will directly find here our result in the bitwig extensions directory here it is which simplifies the development quite a lot because we not have to copy the file all the time so let's check it out if we go here now to the settings controllers and there should be here now the option to have here is the api 12 test we can add that here it is and it simply does nothing we can check if nothing is done okay nothing is done okay it's called in it so the, this one is working fine but does nothing so far so what do you want to do so the first one is we want to filter for specific devices and if we look for that into the api is we have the option to filter let's say we want to filter for an equalizer so the first thing we need to find out is uh, what is this id of the uh, this filter so you see you can filter here create these device matches for vst vs2 you can also combine them with or so you can say i want to have a specific vst or a vst3 or i want to have an eq9 or and the normal eq so you can filter for for different ones and these are lots of different variations yeah i think it's pretty easy to understand if you read the name but how do you find out these ideas so that's the first thing we want to look into and this works like this there is this config json file this is the same file which you already used to activate the device simulator so we'll look my tutorial about the hardware api to understand this and there you can add this line can copy device and param id so it looks like that this one is the, the entry you already had for activating the simulator and this one is the one which activates now the copy device and parameter id stuff so how does it look so if you now start bitwig or restart it if you really already have running bitwig where is bitwig here it is um you can now click here for example here on the polysynth with the right mouse button you see now a new entry which says copy device id to clipboard let's do that so if we then go paste that you see then now this id which is the one to use for the polysynth you can do the same for vst so neo verb is a vst3 there you can also say copy device id to clipboard so you get this id so let's say this is polysynth this is neo verb this is now looks different because this is now a vst id vst three id and let's also look at a vst2 one for example omnisphere is vst2 there you can also copy device id to clipboard uh, so this also looks different this is here uh, vst2 vst3 and this is a uh, native bitwig device just to get an idea how these look and how to use them let's say we want to find the new verb what we have to do is uh, going back to the api specification you see neoverb is vst3 so we create such a vst3 device map matcher we now also know the id so let's go to eclipse project and on init we don't want to have pop up let's get rid of that stuff so let's say we have here the host and for the host we create a, such a device matcher this is just let's say this is a neo uh, neo verb device matcher and the id we create a constant for that i think that's 
good style. So let's say this private final static uh, string uh, neo verb id, and that's the one we used here. So neo verb is that's the one, and that's a string. So here we go, new verb ID, and we create this matcher. So now with this matcher, but what do we do with this matcher? If you look at the API again, you see, let's go back, you see there is now a device bank where you can set such a matcher. So the idea is you can also find multiple new verbs. For example, if you have five new verbs uh, on the track, you could also find that. But let's say we only want to find one. We simply create a device bank, which has only one page. You could also create one with eight if you want to find more or with 10 or how, however how much uh, devices of that type you want to find on this track. Let's say we only are interested in the first one. We need to create a device bank. So first we need a cursor track. We don't need any sense or scenes. Let's go with that one. And from the cursor track we can create now our device bank okay let's say we only want need one device and then we have here the device bank uh, let's call this the new verb filter device bank now we can use this setter so the new verb device matcher we created let's set that device matcher here and this bank does now filter for our uh, specific device so what can we do with that we could get the first item on that or the device item add is the current function let's get the first device so this is potential, uh, let's, let's stick with device, potential device. And uh, to find out if it matches, let's simply say exists. So there is an exist function. If it exists, this specific one, otherwise it will be empty. If there is no new verb, we can some output something. So let's say we want to have here a value observer, a boolean callback. How does a boolean value callback look? Value. Uh, this is just value change with a boolean value okay so we can do it like that let's say let's just lock something here to the console new verb found if the new value is true then yes otherwise no what does this mean so this bank uh, might contain only new verbs so if it's empty there is still a device even if it's empty but then this device does not exist and that's the property we registered with a value observer so we asking that question does it exist if it changes if the device bank changes then we print new verb found yes no like this to the console so let's build that look at bitwig bitwig should reload that and you see new verb found no because our selected track is the one with omnisphere so let's now click on the polysynth and you see new verb found yes so let's go back to that one it's no now let's add a new verb here neo verb here it is and then you see hopefully if we go back here it's also yes so both now if we switch here uh, both have now the now yes if we go here it's no yes 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 uh, because it, the value does not change even if i change tracks it stays and yes there is no new lockout because bitwig only sends updates if there is a change so if you go to no and then go back to for example to that one it's yes and it's printed out so this works nicely so that's the way to filter for specific devices now let's say this new verb here has a specific parameter for example the try red we want to control the try red there you can also have a right click here and say copy parameter id to clipboard so new verb this is here it's number two try red this is how it looks for for vsts so let's also check out what the policy says so what is the filter here you can also copy parameter id to clipboard so the filter here 
is look something like this. So Bitwig uses more names and this is just the numbering here in BSD3. But this will always be the same. So if you reload a project, create a new project, this will always be the same idea. So they are safe and they stay at what they are. So the question is now, how do we get this parameter and how can we change uh, these parameters? If you look in the API documentation of the history, there are now these new methods for the device. So you can create this specific Bitwig via T2 or 3 devices and all these objects you get back they all have such a create parameter method where you can use the parameter as you used to also with the normal device parameters and they only have these different parameters so that one has a string ID let's look at the VST3 device specific plug-in device it has an integer parameter so that's the only difference but you always get back a parameter so let's do that if we continue here we have to create this specific device so let's do create specific we have a vst3 device here and we want to use our new verb id so let's assign that to a local variable let's call that specific device and for that we get the parameters so create the parameter and here we use the number two we found out and assign that as well to a, uh, not like that to it also to a local parameter let's call it here the try red parameter we want to to display or just lock the display value into the console so let's add a value observer which has then a value and let's just print that here to the console so let's say if here try wet and let's put in here the value and that should be it so let's build that so let's check out bitwig it got reloaded and here we have the try wet parameter and you see it's locked to the console and it nothing happens if you change any of the other parameters also not if you change that one so this works as expected that's the second thing we can look at and the third one is inserting specific devices this is simply go uh, use with the insertion point and also with the id so this is straightforward creating an insert point to insert devices, you need insertion point, and there are different methods to get these. So you can say you want to have a sub device chain insert point uh, here from the track, which could be used. Yeah, let's use that one. So this would then insert the method in the first one, and there you can insert here a bit of a device. A file can also be inserted vst2 let's stick with our new verb so we can insert here a new verb and let's say we want to have a button for that so let's get the document state and for that we oops Let's create, no, let's, let's do what? What is it doing? Let's get a button is a, a, a signal, button is a signal label. Why is it always insert a new verb? A label is um, insert new verb and the category is at and the action is let's just call it insert and there we can say we want to have a signal observer it has no arguments and this is simply doing that and that should be it so let's clean it up a bit um, this is um, So let's see if that works. Let's build that. Let's go to Bitwig. 
it got reloaded correctly called unit yes it got reloaded correctly and there should be now here in the side panel there should be api 12 test there is now an insert button and if we press that it should insert a new new app here let's try that out and it does what does it do it crashes great it crashes bit big <laughs> okay so that's uh, great to see so what happened so looking at the Bitwig Studio log file, it turns out it seems to be a Bitwig bug because there is no code for me involved here. When I click that button and it seems to crash the application and this is currently 3.3.1. So hopefully you have already a newer version and this will not happen to you. But nevertheless, I guess you get the idea how that works. And so we come to the end of part 19 already and we are looking forward hopefully to API 13 or maybe they skip 13 to 14, I don't know. <laughs> and until then, write some funky code.